everybody. It's tomorrow. Or is it today? Time has no meaning anymore. Well, we've got lots to talk about today, so I think we should go ahead and get started with our Bible story. King Jesus sent his friends to tell the world about him. But he also gave them a promise. Do you remember what Jesus promised to give his friends? Jesus said, I will send my Holy Spirit to go with you. The Holy Spirit is God, just like Jesus and the Father are God. All three are one God. We cannot see the Holy Spirit. He does not have a body like ours, but the Holy Spirit is God, and He lives with everyone who trusts in Jesus. Jesus' friends remembered His promise, and they waited for the Holy Spirit. They prayed and they waited. Then they prayed and waited some more. Suddenly, Jesus' friends heard a loud rushing sound. Whoosh! They saw strange little flames of fire over each person's head. The Holy Spirit had come! The friends went outside to tell people about Jesus. Many people heard the good news and trusted in King Jesus. The Holy Spirit helped thousands of people become a part of God's new kingdom. That is a crazy story! Like, just think about it! You're sitting there with your friends, waiting and praying for this promise, and then all of a sudden, oh, everyone's heads are on fire! Except the heads aren't on fire. It's just like little candle flames on top of everybody. That's like something out of a weird movie. But it really happened, just like everything in the Bible. And what that story doesn't tell you is that one of the things that happened when the fire came on everybody's heads is that some people were able to speak a whole new language out of nowhere. That's how so many people got to hear about the good news of Jesus. All of a sudden, someone who believed in Jesus could go talk to someone who didn't believe in Jesus about Jesus in that person's own language without ever having to learn the language in the first place. It was pretty crazy and really cool. The question that this Bible has for us today is, who can help us tell people about Jesus? There's all sorts of people who can help you tell about Jesus. Your mommy and daddy can help you. Your teachers can help you. But most importantly, God helps you tell people about himself. That's what the Holy Spirit is, and that's why it's so cool. This is the answer the Bible has. If we trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And the Holy Spirit helps us tell others about Jesus. So we don't really need to worry or be nervous that maybe someone won't like us or they won't listen, because it's really not up to us. It's up to God and to the Holy Spirit that's in our hearts. The Holy Spirit will give you the words or the actions. It's kind of neat that we just get to find out. Well, that was a really cool Bible story. I think we should go do our calendar now. Let's go take a look. We're back again for another week of calendar time. Miss Haley, what was yesterday's number? 20. 20, which is two bundles and zero left over. 10, 20. All right, so then what does that make today's number? 21. 21. See, you can say 21. Easy. All right, and today's day is? Tuesday. Tuesday, which starts with a T. Still hasn't changed. And I think we're still in April. Yes? Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, those are all the pieces of our date, so I think we should say it together. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. All right. Time to sing Weather Watcher again. Weather Watcher, Weather Watcher, what do you see? What do you see? 
Tell us what the weather's like. Tell us what the weather's like. Won't you please? Won't you please? So if I look outside right now, it's raining. It was sunny this morning. Florida is so weird. Do you guys know what time it is? It's time to learn our last letter of the whole school year. My goodness, how time flies. All right, well, we have done A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. What's left? Z. Z is one of the easiest letters to make in sign language because you just draw it in the air. That's a Z. When you write a Z, you have to pay attention because it's kind of tricky sometimes. It's like a sideways N. You start and go across, diagonal, and across. And sometimes that's a little tricky. If yours looks like this, that's okay for now because practice will make perfect. But try your best to make it go diagonally. This is an uppercase and the lowercase is just the same but smaller. So I wonder what sound a Z makes. I think the Z sound is kind of fun because it makes your tongue all tingly. You just go Z. You sound like a bumblebee. You try. <laughs> that makes my tongue all tingly. I wonder if we can think of some words that start with Z. What about zebra? That starts with Z or zipper. Also, zero. All of those things start with Z. And there are Zs in lots of other words. And sometimes it's in the middle and sometimes it's at the end. But I bet you can figure all of those out at home with mommy and daddy. Cause you're just so smart by now. So when I got to see all of you last week, I asked if there were any questions that you had about oceans that I could try to answer. One of the questions was about tide pools. Mostly just, you know, what are they? How do they work? What's going on in that tide pool? So I thought I'd really quickly just talk through tide pools and then you can go look up more information on your own. The tide is what happens when the moon goes around the earth. And while it's going around the earth, it kind of pulls the water with it. That means that twice a day, the water at the beach comes up the beach and then goes back down the beach. And that happens all over the world. And when it goes down the beach back into the ocean, it'll leave behind these little pools full of water and little sea creatures. And in tide pools, you're gonna see things like sea urchins and starfish and hermit crabs and regular crabs and little fishies. All of those things are found in tide pools. And if you go somewhere where usually there's lots of rocks, you'll see the tide pools and all the creatures. The only thing to make sure of is that you don't really wanna touch them, but you can go and just really look and point and, you know, discover. There are lots of other really cool videos about tide pools on YouTube. And if you're interested, you should go check them out because they're usually put on by like marine biologists that have studied this for years. Miss Abby just Googled it real quick right now, so I don't know a whole lot. But they're really cool. And usually like if you go to an aquarium, they'll have a touch tank, you know, where you stick your two fingers in. A lot of touch tanks in aquariums have the creatures that you would see in a tide pool. So some of you have probably already seen them and touched them. All right, I think that's it for today. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.